Hey everyone. I wanted to take you through how to um, make a clever dripper coffee at home uh, using a method that I like to use uh, if I've got a little bit of extra time. Um, it's going to differ ever so slightly from the way we brew with clever dripper on our own coffee bars in London. But um, same ratio of coffee to water, just a slightly different approach to how long I steep for. This is going to be um, a brew using 19 grams of coffee and 300 grams of water. And what's kind of cool with the Clever Dripper is it's a very, very forgiving method where you add the coffee and water all together, let them extract, and then we filter through paper to get a really, really clean cup at the end of it. And you don't need to be so skilled about pouring over all the grounds evenly like you might do in a V60 or a Kalita wave or anything like that where you've got to pour over. So you get kind of the best of both worlds, forgivability that you might have in an AeroPress or French press, but a really clean cup that you might get in a pour over. I'm going to do something a little different to most guides you might see on how to brew with clever, which is to add the water first, and then the coffee. And I'll explain why we're going to do that as well. This is going to be 300 grams of water, just boiled, so as hot as can be. And then I have 19 grams of freshly ground coffee, which I'll throw in and start my timer. Now all the coffee is going to want to sit on the top unless you get a spoon and really nicely mix it all and make sure all the grounds are saturated and wet and extracted. And you'll see this colour change a little bit and they'll still want to rise to the top as they're degassing. Now normally you would pour the boiling water over the grounds, which is completely fine to do as well. But what I find is by doing it this way around, you have a little more control at the end of the brew um, because the way the grinds settle um, you ensure everything gets wet and, wet and there's no dry clumps because um, you can sort of see everything on the surface rather than potentially having a little pocket that didn't get wet in the bottom. And also now the way that the grounds settle at the bottom, they form a slightly different bed that you would get when you pour hot water onto the grounds and it just allows the water to drain through a little easier. So you've got less likelihood of the brew choking um, and that just means you won't lose some of your brewed coffee. And that's good if you want to drink a lot of coffee at home. We've rinsed the filter paper, so it'll be nice and clean. It also preheated the brew a little bit, but because this is a plastic brewer, we're not too concerned about temperature loss. Uh, but I do love to put the lid on as well, just to keep everything consistent and nice. Um, typically in the shops, we would add uh, relatively finely ground coffee, stir as I did, and wait a minute, and then give it another stir and decant. And it might take then one more minute or so for it to drain through. But what I'm gonna do here is leave it for more like two minutes. Uh, and using a slightly coarser grind. Um, it's still not coarse by any stretch of the imagination. I'm talking sort of caster sugar consistency. I find I say that for a lot of brewed coffees because I find actually you don't need to manipulate your grind that much. If you find something that works pretty nicely, you don't tend to have to stray too much uh, to get nice results. Um, so that's nicely brewed for about one minute, 50, two minutes or so. I'm gonna just give it another stir, just in case any grounds come to the top with some more of those roasting gases. And that's all really nice. Now that it's uh, had a chance to brew, we'll decant into here. And this is really the beauty, uh, as I mentioned before, with the Clever. Really, really nice, clean, clear um, mouthfeel and a uh, chance to really taste the flavours in the coffee um, without any distraction of muddiness or siltiness on the tongue that you might have with other immersion methods. If you're forcing through a filter like in the AeroPress or passing through a, a mesh filter like in the French press. But um, without the sort of need for being really precise and standing there the whole while uh, that you have to do with a pour over. I've chosen to do 19 to 300 grams here, but you could just as easily up your dose a little bit, put 33 grams of coffee into half a litre of water. That's right at the top of the brewer. You have to be very skilled not to overflow there, but that's nice to be able to share between two people then. So unlike the AeroPress where you might have to brew a concentrated cup and then dilute, you can make two cups of coffee very easily with the, with the Clever Dripper. And that's all drained through before three minutes. So it's a relatively quick brew, even though this is a slowed down version of what we might do in the shops. Um, and it's pretty, pretty clean as well, a couple of shakes, and this isn't going to drip because the um, bung is now in place at the bottom of the, of the brewer. So even though it's immersion brew, I still like to give the coffee a little mix. There's a tiny chamber under where the filter paper is, where some slightly weaker coffee might, coffee might have sat initially, and then the stronger coffee uh, falling down on top of that. So this will just mix it nicely. And we can have a little taste. I'm brewing a coffee called El Lechero from Peru, from the north, uh, Kajamaka region. 
Um, it's not an area we personally traveled to. We've spent more time around Cusco, um, but Nordic Approach have uh, begun sourcing some really nice coffees from there, from single farms and interesting cooperatives. And um, this is really caught our eye on the cupping table for being very sweet and fudgy and cooked cherry and chocolate-like. So it's a super forgiving, round, sweet coffee anyway. And in such a brewer as the Clever Dripper, it's very hard to go too wrong. Um, and it normally tastes very sweet. It's really, really hot, so I can't tell for sure how good it is, but I know it's good because it's no real bitterness dominating right now. There's a nice acidity integrated into the cup. Um, Actually, the finish is really long. It tastes like brown sugar now. It's really nice. And uh, like I say, it, it's not with too much effort. You just have to uh, find a grind that suits the coffee, which I find to be around caster sugar. Use really nice water to brew your, brew your coffee. If I don't have the chance to fill a water bottle at a nice cafe or, or our own roastery, which because obviously things are closed and we're in lockdown now, um, you can use a filter jug like Brita or BWT. Um, and I'll take the edge off tap water, which might just dampen some of the nice attributes of your cup, like bright acidity. Um, and it can also sort of jar the mouthfeel and the, and the sweetness a little bit. So it's not uh, it's not too difficult. And I hope you have a lot of fun brewing uh, with your coffee at home. And let us know what you think about uh, our approach to the Clever Dripper. Enjoy.